This one is slightly different. There you can even see through. The saying is, um, on this model the battery is supposed to be here on this side and the oscillator is there on this side, so we cut it in half here. I wonder how much it will hold as there is an air gap. And um, the battery points are supposed to be here, actually, now that I think about it. We do not really need to cut it um, as the battery is supposed to be there. Maybe I only drill it open in this area um, and avoid cutting through it. Let's see how that works out. So I drilled this away, similar to the other NVRAM. If you watch my 386 video, you will see the other Dallas was to be drilled here at the side. Uh, this is similar to how I drilled it also in the Ultra 5 that I have not yet made a video of. The reason why I made this different than other examples on the internet is um, others advise you to cut it here in half, which is what I tried on the other one. That was way more work. And in this setup, I not only have to do less drilling and cutting, I can also glue the battery straight on this. If, I, if we cut this in half, it's a little bit less nice to glue the battery. And these contacts here were connected and I drilled through there in the middle to disconnect the top battery from the lower parts where the power of the battery is going through the integrated circuit. The other side is said to have the oscillator connected and there's even someone who is uh, manufacturing a PCB with the oscillator and the battery clip very nicely. Maybe I order some of those another day. But for this testing today I want to see if something works or not. So we will solder the battery here on the left side is negative and the right side is positive. We can also measure this if the battery would not be nearly dead though. Okay, maybe something is barely seeable. So this is millivolt. Uh, probably seeable. And when we measure here, the left, it has a little bit charge left, at least disconnected right now. Yeah, I should keep the battery more charged. So I solder this on and then we see if this fixes something on the spark and keeps the time ticking. So negative is left, as I said earlier, and then we will glue this here. I think it should be enough clearance on this machine, at least this, that is what I'm hoping and thinking. Just uh, similar to how we glued and soldered it to the Dallas Envirum of the 386. I prefer to use proper color coding, so negative black or blue, right now I my black is somewhere where I don't find it right now. Um, but blue is okay because some examples on the internet use also really strange colors and in my opinion it's not nice to if you show other people to use not the most matching colors. not look too bad. And uh, one example also soldered this over cross, but I think it's much nicer like this and then the problem is solved. Because um, in one example where they go over cross then you say uh, negative is left and here right and in my opinion it only creates unnecessary confusion. So let's glue this there. Uh, I also cut here this plastic noses off some distance things that they had here for the case it's soldered to the PCB and I also cut some plastic here away just that it is more flush on the case of this timekeeper. So unfortunately I moved slightly while I soldered it. Probably it's always uh, take so much care and effort and then last minute rush makes something not as super nice. Um, if you repeat this you should and first of all, you could use hot glue, just that we don't have this hot glue gun in the office. And second of all, uh, if you use the second glue thing that I used here, wait until it's dried. I unfortunately, I thought it's mostly dry and then I soldered and moved it slightly. But that is what it is now. And um, yeah, let's put in a battery and see what the sparks are saying to this soldering job. 
but I got this family pack of CR2032 the other day on the sale. Maybe I need to go over there and see if they still have this. Of course, uh, one is in the 386, one is in the K6, and theoretically I have another one and another one in the sun. And yeah, so I really need to refill stock. So this goes in here now, plus is there, pin number one. So this should then go in here like this. It's a bit harder to install this, especially with the glue not dry. That should be in enough. Keyboard is blinking. Then we get serial, but the strange thing with this spark board was that the serial was also not always coming out there. Okay, yeah, now it starts oscillating and running, starting. Kickstart in progress. Okay, incorrect configuration, setting and VRAM parameters to default values. That also should be okay. The question is, does it continue? So pre-sleet always hung here. But maybe it's still hanging there. Anyway, this IPX was only nice to have and uh, maybe the tip is the memory and this report is already nice for some people. Who knows what more is wrong with this board. Could also be the Sun graphics or... Yeah, really strange. Let's... I move it over to the Spark Station. We learned some things with the IPX today and as I don't have the case, we continue with the Spark Station anyway. As I said on the Spark Station, it is the other way around. This is why I also destroyed it. So it should be this orientation. And it's a little bit tight, but it just fits there with the wood from in the CG6 graphics. This power adapter is really a tight fit, it's total annoying to get in and out. And what I said in the Spark Station video, I said it but didn't show it, because in that day I didn't want to take it out. This is how the hard drive snaps in there. From the other side this plastic noses can be pressed in and out. Snaps in like this. So the spark station still comes up. But actually it says the environment content is invalid. I would have thought the... Okay, we could actually try to program it on this one, but the strange thing is the IPX hangs here at this point in the serial prom and it prints a banner here. I wonder if it has to do then with uh, maybe the CG6 graphic is not okay then, but anyway. I am not sure if I want to spend that much more time on this today. Let's program the NVRAM and see if it works properly. So a little final closing words. Um, I got a total shock that the spark station didn't boot anymore. Had to investigate a little bit around there. And um, I did not test it yet, but it turns out somehow, I don't know if I lost the jumper here, and uh, because the disk was Gaussia D1, and the Spark Open Boot Prom wants to default boot from ID3 unless you change the configuration. And as I may have sometimes to mess around with NVRAM, I did not just wanted to change the configuration. I wanted, after I figured out what was the problem, change the SCSI idea with his jumpers back to ID3. I hope this boots in and um, I can finally check also to close this topic for today. Also verify that this timer with this battery is now indeed running and showing a increasing time in Linux is the last boots with this new timer that was incompatible. I always booted with a time of zero, so it was a little bit annoying. So I put this back in and then I hopefully can boot again. So at least it kept our fake MAC address and host ID. I probably still have to disable this extensive self-test. You probably also want probably not use the second glue. It reacted a little bit, doesn't look very nice. Or let it dry longer. Not sure what happened with that. But uh, the glue may not be the best solution for this also. Here yeah, it defaults to ID3. So this still works. I already got the shock and thought the disk was damaged, plugging it in and out and 
Okay, unfortunately the time is not yet fixed, but that could also be a Linux regression. Unfortunately, I did not find anything that would show or work with the date and time in the open boot prompt. Also on boot it says they are unable to read the hardware clock here. But that could also be a regression, as I never had Linux running on this machine, so I don't know if this is still the timer or, or a kernel bug. Anyway, one day I will find out either in SunOS or debugging around in the kernel driver. We will see. So much for the NVRAM drilling and soldering, and um, I hope you learned something from either the tinkering or the Unix boot and firmware stuff. Give it a thumbs up if you have, and don't forget to subscribe for all the next videos to come.